Hallelujah. Just lift up your hands up towards the heavens. The Lord is releasing His grace. His anointing is being released. Urashike derebaho shaba. Roko bo shandai makaban derebaho shaba. The grace of the Lord is being released. Is being released. Is being released. Just lift up your hands and begin to receive from Him. Don't let anything distract you today. Nothing. Your eyes should be on Him and on no one else. Let me tell you, you will miss out on what God is going to do here today if your focus is on other things. I want to encourage you now as we are, we are taking time to pray to begin to set our hearts, set our eyes. Lord, I look only to you. This should be your prayer. Begin to pray this. Lord, I look only to you and no one else. I'm here to encounter you. I pray that this service, hallelujah, will be a service full of encounters. I pray this time and his word will be a time full of his encounters. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Father, I pray for your fire, for your presence to be strong here among us. I pray, oh God, that you use me as an instrument, Lord, as a vessel of fire to bring shift to bring a shift in the atmosphere, to bring a change in the atmosphere. Use me, Lord. I surrender and I submit myself under you. And I say, Lord, have your way. Have your way. Have your way in this place. Have your way over the hearts of your children and manifest yourself and your glory like never before. Like never before. Let today's encounter be a different kind of an of encounter. It will be different. It will be full of power and full of glory. In Jesus' mighty name and all God's children shout, Amen and Amen. Come on, you can do better than this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen and Amen. Please take your seats as we go straight into the word of the Lord. Amen. Turn with me to Deuteronomy 32 and I'm going to read from verse 10 to verse 14. Amen. This is not a Christmas sermon. It's not a, a usual sermon that you would have preached on a day like this. Amen. As I was praying and seeking the face of the Lord, asking the Lord, Lord, give me a word in season for God's children. And church, this is the word that the Lord dropped into my spirit and I believe it's going to be a word for someone here today amen someone will be encouraged someone who has come in here today tired and exhausted maybe someone who has come in here today on the verge of giving up amen today you will receive a fresh anointing and a fresh empowerment from the Holy Spirit can God's children say amen, amen. so Deuteronomy chapter 32 is the song of Moses amen and Moses speaks of the relationship that God had with the children of Israel. Amen. Deuteronomy 32 verse 10 to verse 14. It says, He found him out in the wilderness in an empty wind-swept wasteland. He threw his arms around him, lavished attention on him. Hallelujah. I pray for you today that no matter where you are, in your walk with God maybe you find yourself in the wilderness maybe you find yourself in a wasteland I pray today that the Lord God would locate you in the name of the Lord Jesus did you hear me I said that the Lord God would what would locate you hallelujah guarding him this is the Israelites guard God guarding them as the apple of his eye you're the apple of God's eye look to someone next to you and say to them you are the apple of God's eye. Amen. Sometimes we feel like God has forgotten us, right? We go through so much pain. We go through so much struggles. Many times we reach places where we begin to think to ourselves, maybe God has forgotten us. I'm here to say to someone today that you are the apple. Come on. Can I have an amen? 
You are the apple of God's eye. Amen. You are so precious to God. God cares about you. God still loves you. Amen. He's, you, you today can still experience His faithfulness. You can still experience His goodness. You can still experience His mercy. Can you shout amen? amen. You're the apple. Say I'm the apple. I'm the apple of His eye. This is how precious you are to God. Amen. Hallelujah. God looks at you, amen. Yes, you're surrounded by too many things, amen. You're surrounded by problems. You're surrounded by fiery trials. But let me tell you, it doesn't change the fact that you are still, come on, say I'm still. Oh, Rashikin de Baroko Boshandai. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is fire on the altar of God. Someone needs to know, someone who thinks that God has forgotten them. I'm here to say to you, you know what I just saw? I just saw like fiery stars in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Your situation should not detect, amen, your, 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 your life or your relationship with God. Amen. You're still the apple of his eye and God has not forgotten you. Can you shout a louder amen? amen? It says he was like, God was like an eagle hovering over its nest, overshadowing its young and then spreading. Say with me spreading. Say with me again spreading. Spreading its wings, lifting them into the air teaching them to do what to fly amen hallelujah we are in the season where God is stirring up the nest of God's children this is what God kept saying to me to say to you in this season God is stirring the nest of his children you know why because God wants to teach you how to fly how many of you know that you are like an eagle Isaiah 40 verse 31 it says but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not what they shall walk and not be faint you are an eagle amen hallelujah you are what you are an eagle and God has called you amen to step out of this nest this place of safety this place of comfort amen this place of warmth where God is stirring up in this season because God wants to bring out the eagle in you can you say amen Look to someone next to you and say to them, hallelujah. I just felt like there, is a, there was an increase in the anointing. Look to someone next to you and say to them, you are not a chicken. Neither are you a rabbit. God has made you to be an eagle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone needs to do this. Because God in this season is stirring up some nests amen so that many of you will begin to discover the power that is in your wings many of you have been in the nest for too long I'm here with the word from the Lord God in this season is stirring up some nests amen so that God can drive you out of that nest so that you can begin to flap those wings and be that eagle that God has created you to be can someone shout a big amen you are an eagle you are an eagle god is bringing that eagle out of you today you know by what by staring up that nest many of you have been comfortable for too long you've been sitting in that nest for too long that nest is that place of safety that place of warmth that place of comfort but I'm here today with the word of the Lord the fiery trials that you are going through the struggles that you are going through is God staring up your nest because God wants you out of that nest God does not want you to remain in that nest God wants you to do, to see the, the power that is in you God wants you to understand that as long as you remain in that nest you can never be that eagle that God has created you to be but if today you choose to come out of that nest I'm here to say to someone I'm here to say to someone is someone here with me that God in this season is bringing the eagle out of you amen 
hallelujah he's bringing the eagle out of you but if you keep if you remain in that nest you will never discover who you are amen the fiery trials that you are going through today I'm telling you what God showed me amen the fiery trials that you are going through today is God saying it's time for you to come out of that nest it's time it's time you've been in that nest for too long the fiery trials are not to destroy you amen how many of you know that there is purpose in the struggles that we are going through amen there is no struggle without purpose because if there was no purpose in the struggles that we are going through God would never have allowed them into our lives amen he's too faithful amen he's too good amen he's too merciful that he would allow struggles into our lives to destroy us the fiery trials the struggles that many of you are going through today is God is stirring that nest so that he gets you out of it are you with me can you say amen can you say aloud that amen but many of you have been in the nest for too long and for that reason you have lost your ability to fly hallelujah can I have an amen you have lost your ability to fly but God has created you to be an eagle God does not want you to sit in that nest God wants you out and begin to fly and to soar and be that eagle that God has created you to be amen I'm an eagle amen I'm an eagle there is power in the wing the wings that God has given me there is power in the wings so that I can be who God has called me to be but many of you have been in the nest for too long the fiery trials let me tell you something that I've discovered in my relationship with God God brings the trials into our lives amen there is purpose in every trial but if we are not careful and we don't realize that the fiery trials come with purpose we will miss out on what God is doing are you with me the thing is we have allowed the fiery trials that we are going through to affect our position are you with me that the fiery trials have caged us in and for that reason we have lost our ability to fly amen and the enemy wants you to be caged amen he wants you to be caged as long as you are not flying and as long as you are not who God has created you to be how many of you know that you would fulfill absolutely nothing for God and what I see today in the body of Christ is that God's children have lost their ability to fly but you were created to fly amen we had a parrot many years ago and I've shared this from the pulpit a few times we had the parrot in the house and one time at night the security put some food for the, the parrot to eat but he forgot to close the cage and you would think to yourself when the parrot comes out of that cage the first thing the parrot would do is to do what is to fly away right it's an opportunity how many birds or, or animals or whatever would have this opportunity where you wake up in the morning and your cage is open for you to go out to just fly amen so we came to the to the cage in the morning to realize that the parrot was not in the cage the parrot was not there so I began to search around obviously the first thing that would come to mind is that the parrot has flown away but after looking and looking around I realized that the parrot was walking around in the garden maybe looking at Pastor Jinan's flowers and orchids admiring the, the orchids and, and the flowers so that that parrot was walking around that parrot cage was was open and that parrot had every opportunity hallelujah to do what to fly away but instead of flying away amen and to be that parrot that God had created it to be right that parrot was walking on the ground instead of flying and I'm here today to say to you this is the picture that God showed me about the church today the body of Christ many of us we have lost our ability to do what to fly 
we have been caged for too long we have allowed our situations to determine the direction of our destiny amen we have allowed the problems that we are going through to affect our position we have allowed the problems that we are going through to cage us down we have allowed the problems that we are going through to determine the direction of our life but it should never be so amen the only person who should determine the direction of your life or your destiny should be the Lord Jesus the Holy Spirit amen our situation around us should never have to affect the direction that that God has ordained for us to move into right it's like the man at the beautiful gate amen you know his his worst problem was not the issue with his eyes are you with me can I have an amen the man at the beautiful gate his worst problem was not the problem with his eyes but he had allowed the blindness to affect his position amen the Bible tells us that every day they would bring him to sit at the door of the temple called beautiful gate how many of you know that behind that door there was glory are you with me am I preaching to someone here today how many of you know that behind that door there was anointing to get to set him free and bring him deliverance amen but the Bible tells us day after day his friends would lay that blind man at the beautiful gate that blind man had every opportunity to enter into the place of glory and receive his his healing but he had allowed the situation that he was in to affect his position am I preaching today am I preaching to someone here today is this message speaking to someone here today who has allowed his situation to affect his position your situation comes with purpose and this your situation should only drive you into the presence of God and nowhere else but the aim of the enemy is to cage us down the aim of the enemy is to cause us to move in the wrong direction and and prevent us from being who God has called us to be but God today is going to bring deliverance to you many of you are going to come out of that nest many of you are going to discover what God has for you in, in this year and in 2024 many of you have walked in here today wondering God which direction am I going to move into I'm here to say to you today that God in his power will reveal to you today and you will know the direction that you are to move into hallelujah hallelujah God is stirring up some nests amen but make sure that as God is bringing in those things to stir that nest that we don't remain seated in that nest because it's the season to step out to step out because as long as you remain in that nest I'm telling you you will never discover what God has in store for you amen hallelujah did you hear me as long as we remain in that nest we will never discover what God has for us how many of you know that God has great levels for us God has great heights for us amen God has great plans for us but if we remain in the nest we will never discover his plans neither will we discover his purpose are you with me listen to what the Bible says listen to what the Bible says says in in Ephesians 2 verse 10 it says for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for what for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them you are God's workmanship you were not created without purpose amen you were created with purpose in mind every one of you maybe you've maybe you've heard it being said about you that your mom or your dad tried to abort you so you have been born thinking that maybe you've been born by mistake and I have been, I'm born without purpose I'm here to speak to someone today that you have purpose God created you with purpose the moment there was conception purpose was birthed into you can you shout amen, amen. hallelujah 
Amen. You were born with purpose and God would do everything in His power so that every child of God would fulfill His purpose. Are you with me? Just like the eagle. Amen. The eagle knows. It says he was like an eagle hovering. God was like an eagle hovering over the, the Israelites, over its nest, overshadowing its young and then spreading its wings, lifting them, lifting what? Them into the air, teaching them to fly. You know the picture here? Let me try to explain it. The eagle in the beginning starts to supply. The eaglets are born. They are in the nest. He provides feathers for them to sit on, to sleep on. Amen. He provides warmth. He provides food. He provides security, right? He's hovering over them. Why do you think he's hovering over them? Watching if there is any prey around. Someone needs to know that God is hovering over you. Are you with me? Can you say amen? Someone needs to know that God is hovering over you. Amen. No matter what you're going through, the Spirit of the Lord is hovering over you. Hallelujah. So the eagle begins to hover over the eaglets that are comfortable in the nest. Amen. Mommy brings food, brings worms in her mouth and she feeds them. They eat and they begin to praise God. Now the eagle goes, first month providing security, second month providing safety, amen. Third month, fourth month, he's doing everything that a mother will do. But now the eagle wants to teach the eaglets to fly. The eaglets were born with the nature of the eagle, amen. The fact that they were small, and tiny it doesn't mean they are not created to be an eagle and the same with you today you have God's nature on the inside of you is someone hearing me you have God's nature the Holy Ghost on the inside of you and God will do everything and anything to bring that nature out of you are you with me your amen is too low your amen can be louder than this. Your hallelujah can be loud. Praise the Lord. So what the eagle begins to do as he has fed them for first month, second month, now the sixth month, he needs to teach them to be an eagle. They were not created to be in a nest. An eagle was not created to live in a nest. Are you with me? An eagle was not created to, to live in water or swim. An eagle is created to be or to live in the sky. Amen. So after providing safety, security, warmth, now the eagle begins, the mother eagle begins to hover over that nest and begins to flap its wings. You know when the mother eagle begins to flap its wings, it begins to make the eaglets uncomfortable. The fiery trials, the storms that you are going through. I'm telling you, it's God hovering over you. It's God flapping His wings. It's God making your nest uncomfortable because God wants you out of that nest. So the mother eagle begins to flap. The eaglets, in the beginning, they're wondering, what is mom doing? She flaps the more. Now the feathers were they were lying on and they were comfortable they are no more there by the flapping of the wings those eaglets cannot sit anymore they try to sit and the thorns from the nest become so uncomfortable for them to sit are you with me so she begins to flap those wings again and flap them again to make that nest uncomfortable eventually when they are standing up on their feet the eagle would come and pick those eaglets up and lift them up into the air amen and fly with them and drop them into the air and when they are dropping the bible tells us the eagle would hover around them amen you may be dropping at such speed but let me tell you the eagle 
is hovering around you. You may be dropping so fast. Many of you are dropping so fast and you're wondering, is my mother, is my father eagle around me, the Lord around me? But let me tell you, no matter how high the eagle took you into the air and has left you to drop, the eagle is flying around you. And just when the eaglet is ready to hit the ground, the eagle picks it up again and lifts it up into the air. We've done first course one. Now it's time to do, go to course two. As, as the eaglet was dropping, the eaglet tries to flap its wings and is saying, Mama, I can't fly. And the mama would say, now you wait. I'm going to lift you up again. When I lift you up again and I drop you second time, I drop you third time, you keep flapping those wings because when you keep flapping those wings i'm telling you eventually you will discover that there is power in those wings to cause you to fly so first time into the air second time into the air third time fourth time amen then the eaglet begins to flap the eaglet begins to flap now she's no more in the nest amen now she's out of the nest in fact even at the end he begins to look look out for the mother when are you coming to pick me up again? Amen. Because now the eaglet is discovering his purpose. How many of you know that there is no better place to be than to be in God's plan and God's will for your life? In the beginning it may look difficult. In the beginning it may look painful. But as the eaglet begins to discover that the, eagle was, that the eaglet was created to fly, joy begins to fill your heart. Amen. Purpose begins to fill the heart. That is why I'm here to say to you that God is staring your nest today because God is driving you into your purpose. I thought your amen would be loud. Hallelujah. Don't, we will go out and eat. This is better. Say this is better. This is spiritual food. Let me tell you, this one outside, you will eat and before the close of the day, it will be out hallelujah some of you will eat and by four o'clock you would say to your wife honey i'm hungry again but let me tell you something that sustains something that is able to build something that is able to bring change something that is able to bring a shift in your life is nothing but the word of god amen hallelujah open your hands and say father fill me up with your word fill me up with your word fill me up with your word fill me up with your holy spirit hallelujah hallelujah so the eaglet now begins to discover its purpose i was not created to be in the nest first month second month third month six months i thought that was home i thought that was what i'm supposed to be but until the eagle began staring up my nest that i was able to try to to discover my purpose and that is what I see God doing, church. God is stirring your nest so that you can discover your purpose. Many of you don't know your purpose. Amen. But don't let the situation, the fiery trials that you are going through to hold you down, but let them drive you into your purpose. Can I have an amen? You look at Moses. Moses is the best example. How many of you know that if Moses had stayed with Pharaoh in the, in the palace, Moses would never have discovered his purpose. Are you with me? He would never. Amen. He had the best life in the palace. The best. Maybe he would have been taking Pharaoh's place in few years. Are you with me? He had the best life in the palace. He had comfort. He had safety. He had what? He had everything in the palace. But God began to stir up his nest. And as God stirred up his nest, God drove him into the desert of Midian. And how many of you know that it was in the desert of Midian that Moses discovered his purpose are you with me if Moses had stayed in the palace he would never have discovered his purpose and the same goes to you today if you choose to remain in your nest 
you will never discover your purpose but if you choose today to step out of that place of comfort and that place of safety allow God to drive you into your purpose it was there in the wilderness that Moses encountered the Lord Jesus encountered God amen in the burning bush he encountered God and today as you begin to step out of your nest I'm telling you many of you would have encounters that are going to blow your mind hallelujah hallelujah say with me it's time to step out of my nest amen I hope this is encouraging you amen it's time to step out of the nest you have been comfortable for too long too much amen it's time to step out and discover who God has called you to be you are God's workmanship that means you were created with purpose you were created with purpose in mind are you with me hallelujah I don't know about you but if you want to discover your purpose amen because there is fulfillment in walking in God's purpose I'm telling you I always say to my children let me tell you you have dreams you have things that you want to achieve but always make sure that they are in line with God's plan and God's purpose for your life because you can be the richest person own the best cars amen but not be happy today because you are not in God's plan and God's will for your life can I have an amen for this let me tell you the best place to be today is to be in the will of God amen you may be going through pain you may be going through struggles but but as long as you are in the will of God hallelujah as long as you are in the will of God you will be fulfilled amen maybe you have nothing today maybe you're seeking to get married maybe you're seeking to have a job you have absolutely nothing today but God when he looks at you he doesn't look at you as one who is empty and having nothing God looks at you and he sees someone who is in his will can I have an amen, amen. hallelujah hallelujah amen your situation should never affect the direction that you are moving in it should draw you even closer to God because God has a plan and God has a purpose for you and let me tell you there is no fulfillment outside of that plan and outside of that purpose but if you seek to go deeper with God you will discover that purpose you will discover that plan and even if you have absolutely nothing today you can be fulfilled like I tell you, sometimes I don't want to preach. Sometimes I'm struggling to preach. Sometimes I'm also going through fiery struggles, fiery trials. Don't think pastors are an exception. In fact, we take all the arrows that are supposed to come to you. They come to me first. Can you say amen? amen. Say, pastor, front the battle for me. You be in the battle. I'm okay where I am. You take the arrows and you take them on my behalf. Amen. The pastor is no exception when it comes to struggles. Ask any pastor. We have pastors in our midst. Ask them if they struggle. We struggle maybe even more, more than you. Amen. But the, sometimes I don't feel like standing up here to preach. Amen. But I know that there is fulfillment in doing what God has called me to do. Even when I'm struggling, even when I'm sick, there are times where I'm sick all night. And I preach from the pulpit. Many of you have no idea. I remember when we, we got COVID, we were in a country, I don't wanna, and I, I've shared this from the pulpit many times. We were burnt out from what we went through because we were in quarantine for 21 days. And those of you who know me, know that you can't lock me down for more than a day. You see what you see here on the pulpit? It's the same everywhere. Amen. I'm always on fire. Hallelujah. See, my wife said amen to this. So we came out, burnt out after being in quarantine for 21 days. We arrived on Friday. On Saturday, we had the wedding in the church. On Sunday, we had 
we, I had to preach and minister the word of the Lord. I put on my nice clothes on, on, on Saturday. I did the wedding. On Sunday too, I preached the word of God. No one knew from the, in the congregation, apart from Pastor Isaac and few others who were praying for us that God bring them out of this quarantine. And the way we were treated when we were in quarantine, it was crazy. In fact, we were so burnt out after the 21 days. Burnt out. Did I want to preach on Saturday and, and minister to, to a couple and do a wedding and minister on Sunday? No! I didn't want to. Amen. But as I mounted that pulpit on Saturday, as I mounted that pulpit on Sunday, amen, and I, and, and I stepped into the place where, God, where I stepped into God's purpose for my life to preach the gospel. When I step into that place, I find fulfillment i find joy i may have been burnt out i may have been struggling but i tell you when i stepped and i started doing what god asked me to do it felt like i had gone on holiday for three weeks amen and it's the same for you you know we were burnt out we put on all our nights because when we were coming in a lot of people were saying pastor you are looking so good today so refreshed and in my mind, I'm saying, if only you knew what I went through. Refreshed? Ha! Ah. You don't think that there is any refreshment in what we want. I was burnt out. In fact, when I ministered on Sunday, I thought I was going to collapse on the pulpit, on the altar. But there is always fire on this altar. There is always fire. Amen. And this is why I'm sharing this with you. As long as you are in the will of God, you may be burnt out. You may, you may, do, you may be in a place where you are uncomfortable. You may be squeezed down on every side. Amen. But as long as you are in the will of God, that is what is most important. Because there is no fulfillment outside of the will of God. It's only in His will. So when God is stirring your nest, amen, and the fiery trials, that you are going through begin to ask yourself lord show me the direction that you want me to head into because the quicker you discover that direction i'm telling you the quicker you will discover purpose and because in purpose is where there is fulfillment amen find your purpose find what god has called you to do every one of you is called every one of you was created with a purpose find it don't waste your time on this earth walking like a dog running around his tail running in the direction you know in the just aimlessly find your purpose because when you find your purpose you will find fulfillment are you with me where there is no purpose there is no fulfillment find God's purpose for your life and God is staring nest today so that he can drive you into purpose and God is staring your nest today takes me to number two so that he can build your capacity amen God is making room for more he's making room for what for more amen just like an eagle as the wings are being stirred, as the nest is being stirred, the, 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 the eaglet begins to drop to the ground. And only then, that, as the eaglet flaps its wings, the eaglet discovers that, the, that she or he can what? Can fly. Amen. God is building capacity. God is building capacity. What do I mean by God is building capacity? What God is doing in this season as He's stirring your nest is God is taking your roots deeper into Christ. Amen. I don't know where your roots are today. Amen. But if you want to stand strong in this life, let me tell you, begin to have your roots in where? in Christ and even more allow God to take those roots deeper into Christ because the storms will come the fiery trials will come but you know who will stand strong is those whose roots are deep in Christ can I have an amen, amen. can I have a louder amen? amen Colossians 2 verse 7 it says rooted and built up in him strengthening in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thanksgiving rooted and built up where in him 
Hallelujah. Ephesians 3 verse 17, it says, So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established, where? In His love. God wants you to be rooted in Him. When He stirs that nest, not only is He driving you into your purpose, but, but God is building your capacity. God is taking your roots deeper into Him. Hallelujah. I don't know if there is any better place for your roots to be in. It's in the presence of God. It's in Christ. It's in His love. Amen. Because when the storms come, when the struggles increase, when the fiery trials become even more, let me tell you, it's where your roots are that determine if you will be shifted today or not. Amen. If you will move today. Let me tell you, the storm can move you today. The storm today can destroy you today. But if you are rooted, deeply rooted in Christ, the storm will come. Amen. But you will be unshakable. Your faith will be unshakable. I see the Lord increasing some faith and bringing some faith into this place. Hallelujah. Say with me, Lord, increase my faith. Lord, give me more faith for the season that I am in. You know, this was the prayer of the disciples. They said to Jesus, when Jesus said to, to them, you need to forgive 70 times 7. They realized it was impossible. So they said to Jesus, increase our faith. Literally saying to the Lord, Lord, give us more faith. We know that this is impossible. We know to forgive is impossible. Even when we, times where it's more even difficult to forgive. But we know we can do it if you give us that faith to do it. And it's the same for us today. Are the, are the trials of life difficult? They are. Even walking with Jesus, is it difficult? It is. Is obeying difficult? It is. But if we have faith, if God today can increase your faith, I'm telling you, it will change your life and your relationship with God. Can I have an amen? amen. Hallelujah. God is increasing capacity. God is doing some crushing. God is doing some breaking and in that he's increasing capacity. He's doing an expansion so that God can pour in more of his anointing and his power on the inside of you. Some of you are like grapes. Children, are you with me? Hallelujah. Children, can I have an amen? Oh, they are not there. Children, can I have an amen? All right. Adults, can I have an amen? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But the Lord said, let the children come to me. Amen. He loves the children. Hallelujah. So many of you are like grapes. You know how they, they produce wine? They put the grapes in the bucket. And you know what they do? They press, they, 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 they crush the grapes. And out of that crushing, what comes out? The grape juice and eventually the grape wine and it's the same the olives you look at olives many of you love olive oil it's beautiful to eat olive oil but when you think about the process of how this olive oil is produced they put the great the, the olives into a crusher or a grinder and they they crush those olive seeds and and, and out of that the oil begins to flow out and it's the same I see what God is doing in the stirring of the net. He's building capacity for more. He's building capacity for what? For more. He's crushing, but in the crushing, guess what God is doing? He's pouring in more. More oil, more anointing into your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say with me capacity. Say with me again capacity. Say Lord, increase my capacity. Increase my capacity for more. Oh, come on. You don't sound like a church who is excited for God to increase your capacity. Hallelujah. Say, God, increase my capacity for more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is bringing more into your life. More of His presence into your life. God is making more space so that you can receive more. And it's in the crushing and in the breaking that God brings expansion so that He can pour in His wine. Hallelujah. God is driving you into purpose. God is building your capacity. And number three, God wants to display His power. 
Amen. God wants to do what? In the staring of the nest. If you remain in the nest, you will not experience God's power. Amen. If you remain in the nest, hear me again, you will not experience God's power. If you want to always remain comfortable, you want to always remain safe, God, I'm happy where I am. I'm just happy here. You will never experience God's power. But let me tell you something about the God that I serve. God loves to display His power. Not for the one in the nest. It's for the one outside of the nest. Are you with me? If Moses had stayed with Pharaoh, if Moses had stayed with Pharaoh in the palace, he would never have experienced the power of God. God took him to Midian. Amen. For, for 40 years, God helped him discover his purpose. But when he reached to Egypt, how many of you saw how God displayed his power among the Israelites? And this is what I'm here today to say to you, that God wants to display his power in your life. And I'll show you from scripture in Psalms 106 verse 8, it says, yet he saved them for his namesake to make his mighty power known say with me known he saved them amen God saved you for his namesake to make his mighty power known Psalms 111 verse 6 it says he has shown his people he has shown his people the power of his works given them the lands of other nation what did God do he showed them his power and God loves to display his power he loves to display his power you want to experience miracles today in your life if I say how many of you want to experience God's favor I'm sure everyone here will shout amen how many of you want to experience deliverance many of you will shout amen want to experience God's favor God's breakthrough amen we can shout amen and amen, but to experience and allow God to display His power in our lives, we need to come out of the nest. Are you with me? Are you with me? Can you say amen? Can you say a louder amen? We need to come out of that nest, that place of comfort, that place of safety, and become who God has created us to be allow God to build capacity in us because God wants to bring in more more and more hallelujah in fact what I see God doing in the trials that you are going through is God increasing your hunger for more say God I want more God I want more say God give me more if this prayer is from your heart I'm telling you you will begin to experience more of God in your life you will begin to experience more of God in your life. Oh, did you hear me? You will begin to experience more of God in your life. Amen. It says, blessed are those who are what? Hungry and thirsty after righteousness. For they will be what? They will be filled. If you are hungry for God today, expect that God would fill you up. Amen. He will fill you up. Hallelujah. And God wants to display His power. Let's be up on our feet. God wants to display His power in our life. Amen. Many of you are praying for miracles. Many of you are praying for God, I want to experience your favor and your brave. I want to experience deliverance and restoration. But it's outside of the nest that we can experience all of this today. It's all of this today. My question to you, are you willing to come out of that nest are you willing listen to me very carefully I know many of you are anxious to go out to step out but let me tell you are you willing to come out of that nest are you willing today to go deeper with the Lord Jesus you know where it stops church it stops the moment we decide in our heart that we don't want anymore. Is anyone here with me? Keep listening to me very carefully. 
I'm ministering under the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit. I will not say things that I just want to make you happy. I'm here to preach and say only what the Lord wants me to say. Let me tell you where it stops. It stops the moment you stop desiring God. The moment you say, God, I don't want anymore. God, I'm not interested in going with you even deeper. I'm not interested. Amen. It stops right there. It stops there. It stops there. If you say, God, I'm tired and I don't want to continue this journey anymore. It stops right there. You put a full stop where you are. It's not God. It's not God. You put a full stop there. Amen. But God is not finished with you yet. God is not finished with you yet. God has more for you. In this season, you experience God. In 2024, it's going to even be more. 2025, it's going to even be more. 2026, it's even going to be more. But it all depends on you, on your hunger and your passion for God. That's, that's what stops God from moving. The moment we, we, we say, God, we are no more hungry for you. But if you're hungry today for God, I'm telling you, you will experience an overflow in your life. You will experience your, an overflow in every area of your life. Are you with me? So just lift up your hands. I know God is stirring your nest today. Those of you upstairs, little children, just lift up your hands. Because God is able to touch you wherever you are. Those on the outside, please just lift up your hands. And just allow the Lord to begin to minister to you. And to speak to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, just pour your presence over your children right now. Let them begin to experience you. Let them begin to experience your love. Let them begin to experience your power, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, set them free. Deliver them. Father, I pray for a new perspective today. I pray that you open their eyes and you help them see what you are doing in their life. I pray that they will no more walk around blindly. Because many of you are walking around blindly. Blindly. But the Lord is taking, uh, is taking away those blindfolds. He's taking away those blindfolds. So that you don't have to walk around blindly anymore. So that you can discover your purpose. And discover who God has created you to be. To discover what God has created you to be. Father, release this grace right now. Release this grace right now. Release this grace right now. The grace that is able to usher us back into every plan of yours. Release that grace right now. Empower us with your spirit and fill us up today. In Jesus' mighty name. And all God's children shout a big amen. Hallelujah.